Welcome back to another Tuesday night metabolic edition. We're going to talk about several studies that have found. All right. Looks like we're live. I'm going to hit the pause button. Okay. We're going to talk. Welcome back to another live session, friends. We're going to talk more about how several studies have found that people that do not exercise do not experience the same metabolic health benefits linked with fasting. And the title of the study that we're going to talk about today, as you can see here, training state, excuse me, training state and skeletal muscle autophagy response in 36 hours of fasting. And it was after reading the study that I changed my approach to intermittent fasting because I quickly looked and saw that exercise is one of the most important activators of the purported health benefits linked with fasting that many of you know of, which is autophagy. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that and dive into the study. So let's dive into it. Here's the actual paper. And I'm going to clear this layer so you don't have to look at this technical jargon. This is the paper that we're talking about here. Again, training state and skeletal muscle autophagy in response to a 36-hour fasting session. So we're diving into that, my friends. And uh, we're going to skip through all the technical jargon. Not, not that it's not important, but I would like to get to uh, some of these different mechanistic figures here, looking at skeletal muscle biopsies with regards to changes in markers linked with autophagy after 36 hours fasting, comparing that in trained versus untrained individuals. So let's look here at the black bars. I'm going to give you the high level overview and then we'll dive into your questions. But first, as always, my friends, I just want to say thank you for being here. Thanks for hitting that like button. Uh, I'm super honored that you're with us here live. If you're enjoying the content or if you have any metabolic health related questions, type them in the chat bar or the comment section if you're watching the video live later. But again, hitting that like button, sharing this with a friend who's really into fasting helps them better understand the importance of exercise. I don't care if you fast or not. If you want to do a seven-day fast, a 36-hour fast, alternate day fast, there are benefits there. But you get more mileage if you also habitually exercise three to five days per week. That's where we're going. I'm not saying fasting is useless. I'm not saying there are no benefits linked with fasting. In fact, this study did find that people who exercise experience greater benefits from fasting. That, my friends, is the point. And so we're going to dive into that and then talk about this paper too. A muscle-centric perspective on intermittent fasting, a suboptimal dietary strategy for supporting muscle protein synthesis and uh, remodeling. So that is where we are going. Let's dive into the nuts and bolts. Again, any questions that you have, I will get to them very soon, but let's cut back to the paper. Okay. So again, I'm sharing with you images of the various autophagy initiation proteins. And these are the autophagy initiation proteins. And what you see here is after at all points during the fasting protocol, you see people who regularly exercise have significantly higher markers of various autophagy initiation proteins. Now, some of these words are not so familiar to all of you and nor to me, but suffice it to say, these are several of the autophagy initiation transcription factors that kickstart the many purported health benefits linked with fasting, including mitophagy, autophagy, protein, deranged protein metabolism, uh, Becklin-1, uh, ULK, all sorts of different uh, uh, ULK proteins uh, and the like. And so if we go down here and look at the Western blots of the skeletal muscle in athletes versus non-athletes after fasting, you see significantly higher concentrations of the, of the uh, well, first of all, mTOR starts to decline over time, but look at the mTOR activation uh, at the initial point here. So Essentially, what you're seeing in people who are not physically trained, who don't habitually exercise, is their baseline levels of autophagy is significantly lower compared to people who physically exercise, which is quite important uh, to take note here. Also, AMPK. Again, the Western blot analysis is looking at the concentration of the protein. Remember, AMPK is an important autophagy enhancer. Now, what do you see here? Yeah, it starts to increase after 36 hours in the untrained people, but in the trained people, it starts to increase after just 12 hours of fasting, which I think is really quite remarkable. And so we're going to dive into more of these details uh, in the paper. And I, I just think it's it's just incredibly fascinating. But I also want to make sure that we are addressing your live questions. So again, I'm going to have the paper here. I'm going to read to you some quotes from the paper, and we're going to get to your live questions. Okay. So fasting did elicit response in many markers of autophagy, but without indications of initiation of autophagy in untrained people. This is a quote from the paper. So again, there's many people who are overweight 
and obese, and they want to purportedly en enhance autophagy and experience some of the health benefits linked with fasting. But as this paper finds, there was not significant increases in autophagy in people who don't exercise even after 36 hours. Okay. Now, there were also changes in serum amino acids. The scientists say, in addition, several plasma amino acids were different in untrained and trained individuals during fasting. Taken together, these findings of the present study suggest that a 36-hour fasting state regulates autophagy in human skeletal muscle, as well as plasma amino acids, but it, it impacts it in a training state-dependent manner. Meaning, if you habitually exercise, you get so much more mileage out of your intermittent fasting window. Now, I think that's really important. The scientists go on to say the present observation is that fasting decreased LC32, which is a marker of autophagy, uh, in untrained uh, subjects and so forth. Uh, and the changes were different in the uh, trained athletes. Now, this different protein response between the previous studies and the present study may be due to the muscle fiber type because there's, there's conflicting data in animal models versus human subjects. But the scientists say it is possible that the, uh, that the changes in these proteins in the untrained subjects in the current study uh, may be experienced only after longer fasting durations. So if you're like, look, I'm just going to fast. I don't want to exercise. That probably means you need to fast longer to experience some of the health benefits. Because if you're just now joining us, here's some of the images here. These are AMPK, the, the gas pedal for this highly sought after intracellular cleanup, cleanup process known as autophagy is, is initiated by this protein known as AMPK. And as you can see here, this is significantly higher after just 12 and 24 hours in athletes, people who habitually exercise, compared to people who do not after the initiation of a fast, which I think is really important. So you don't start to see the increase in, auto in the autophagy initiation protein kinase known as AMPK until 36 hours in untrained persons. So I want to leave it at that for the moment. We're going to continue to dive into the study, but first I do want to get to your live questions. Again, thank you for being here live. If you like this time on Tuesday, let me know. We have quite a few questions here, so I'm going to pop out the chat. I like to acknowledge our live audience here and everyone can benefit even if you're watching this after the fact. Okay. All right. Great question here from Manny K. Not recommended to take supplements while fasting might give you worse hunger cravings. Well, it depends on the supplement. You know, it really depends. Uh, if people are taking collagen that has vanilla flavor or they're taking other flavored products, that might lend itself to overconsumption of food. But I'll just give you a quick plug here. Uh, one supplement that can help your fast is known as berberine. Berberine actually initiates the autophagy initiation proteins known as AMPK that we just talked about. So if you want to support your fast and get into it, just do a 12 or 18 hour, hour fast. Check out the berberine fasting accelerator by Myoscience. I'll put links in the description below. When I was really into fasting and getting into fasting, I found berberine to be very helpful at curbing food cravings. So if you're susceptible to food cravings, you might want to check that out. Okay. Uh, great comment there, Manny. We have a lot of folks that are here live with us for the first time, so thank you for being here live. Again, if you're here and enjoying the content, hit that like button. That just lets me know after the fact that we should do more content like this. Okay. Uh, Pauline has a question. Should I take supplements while fasting? Well, yeah, I do. I, I don't see why not. Again, the idea is you wouldn't want to overdo all of the flavors and stevia and monk fruit potentially. But if you're exercising, it probably doesn't matter. You know, if you're if you're doing an 18 hour fast and you exercise at hour 12 during that fast, if you have you know a pre workout or some electrolytes or things like that, I'm not worried about that at all. Remember, exercise gives you more leeway in terms of the flexibility in your fasting window. You don't have to fast as long as we have just seen here. That reg people who regularly exercise, even just after 12 hours, have significant increases in their markers of autophagy initiation proteins, as can be portrayed in this figure. And we're looking specifically at the autophagy initiation protein known as AMPK. And you see after just 12 hours, that is significantly higher compared to any time point, after, even after 36 hours compared to people who don't exercise. I mean, this figure right here should be the most compelling argument for exercise in terms of a fasting mimetic or a fasting enhancer. Uh, so I think 
I get really passionate about this because I, I feel that people overemphasize fasting and underemphasize exercise. Okay, Kevin has a question here. I'm super thin, 170 pounds, six feet tall, and I eat three meals a day. Uh, or else I will lose uh, too much muscle mass. And this person, Kevin, has been keto or carnivore for four years. Right, so this is an individual at 175 pounds. I happen to be six foot one, so I understand I, I'm about 185 pounds. I would be very skinny. And, and I found that when I was fasting a lot, you know, once a week doing a 24, 36 hour fast, once a quarter during a three day fast, I found that it, I was losing too much strength and I just realized that I don't wanna get weaker as I get older. Uh, I, I still think, I still leverage fasting, I still do fasting on days that I travel, on days where maybe I've overdone it on a birthday or a holiday, I'll fast the next day uh, to hit the reset button, so to speak, but um, definitely not doing excessive fasting uh, any longer. Okay. Great questions coming in. I'm just going to continue to answer some of these live questions. Again, I'm super grateful that you are all here. Uh, we are talking about the importance of exercise, especially if you want to harness the benefits of fasting, including activating autophagy. And so that's uh, what we're what we're really talking about uh, today. Okay, so let's get into some more live questions. Uh, the Quantum Alchemist always has good comments. Still, especially nowadays, given the low nutrient content in our food, I highly recommend supplementing when you fast. Good comment, as I mentioned. Um, you have changed our food. Yes, our food has changed over the last 100 years. So yes, supplements during fast, fasting windows, no problem with that. How long do you eat after you have to take a walk in order for it to be effective? Is there a time limit? Okay, well, you know, I like to take a walk in the post-meal window within 30 to 45 minutes. Um, studies, various studies show about 30 to 45 minutes is kind of the, if you're trying to split hairs, the optimal time to walk after a meal because that's when your glucose in the post meal window would be its highest. And so if you start moving your skeletal muscle, remember muscles are sponges for serum glucose. You know, the difference between having diabetes and not diabetes is literally half a teaspoon of, blood, of glucose in the bloodstream. It's literally that tightly regulated. So if you can just go for a walk and pull out some of that serum glucose, you're going to have much better glucose regulation over the long haul. Uh, glucose is, is, should be tightly regulated. Okay, uh, the Jonek has a great question. What is untrained defined as? What characterizes an untrained individual? Well, this would be someone who doesn't exercise, someone who doesn't habitually exercise. And so that's what this study found. And we can look at the materials and methods of the study. Let's do that together right now. How about that? Okay, so we can look at the inclusion criteria in this particular study. All right. Uh, I'm doing this live as we're uh, talking about this. I, I have read this study multiple times, but not uh, recently. Okay, so um, the untrained individual experimental set setups. Okay, 17 healthy healthy male subjects were recruited on the basis of the determination of whole body maximal oxygen uptake. The inclusion of subjects required either a VO2 max below 45 or a VO2 max above 55 mil mil milliliters per minute per kilogram of body weight. So again, people who have a low VO2 max, uh, probably due to the fact that they don't exercise uh, habitually, uh, they were not trained. They were not aerobically fit. Oh, you can't see that because I need to clear this layer. Okay, here we go. Let's clear this layer. Do, do, do. All right, so you can see what I'm reading here. And so that's how, in, that was the inclusion criteria. Now, these were, were young individuals. Uh, I believe these uh, individuals were under the age of 30. Okay, and so this led to the exclusion of four subjects and resulted in seven untrained and six trained individuals with no significant differences in the group. The mean age here was 28 years of age. And so that helps to get to the question that was just asked about uh, how did the scientist uh, differentiate between trained and untrained? And so this was VO2 max testing. And so if your VO2 max is below 45, that would suggest that you don't regularly exercise. Now, because these people are only 28 years old, remember VO2 max has an age element to it. The older you get, naturally your VO2 max would decrease. So uh, it would be unreasonable to s construct a study where a VO2 max inclusion criteria of 60 year olds was 45 because most 60 year olds do not have a VO2 max of 45, even if they exercise. 
Some do, and these are lifelong athletes, but most do not. And so that was the inclusion criteria. So the trained individuals had a high VO2 max, especially for their age. For example, at age 40, my VO2 max was 49. Um, it's actually 49.5 if you really care. But so uh, if I was in this study, I would be um, considered not at the threshold, but I'm also 12 years older than these study subjects at the time. So there would have to be an age appropriate VO2 max uh, uh, consideration there. So I think that that is quite interesting. So hopefully that helps answer your question. Okay. Uh, what about exercise versus fasting when it comes to cancer prevention? Yeah, this is a great question from Sinclair Luau. Uh, great question. So what do I think about, I think both, I think both daily time-restricted feeding paired with habitual exercise three to five days per week, hitting every major muscle group with some resistance training, and then doing walking after major meals. I think it's a, a phenomenal strategy and some steady state, uh, steady state, uh, exercise on the weekends, hiking, walking, uh, biking, things like that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Excellent conversation. All right. Uh, how long? I, okay. Um, I already uh, answered that question. Oh, great question here. Would it be better to do sauna post exercise while fasted since food blunts the secretion of human growth hormone? To the best of my knowledge, a sauna is not going to significantly spike human growth hormone. Um, but I don't think going in the sauna on a full stomach is a good idea either. So that's a good comment there. Good question. Okay. The man with no name. I'm a male who is 38 years old, 330 pounds. I struggle to exercise more than walking an hour per day. How much should I walk when I fast? I would consider still doing the same exercise and walking that you do even while you're fasting. I, that's what I would suggest. So that's a, a really good question. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so there's a comment here from Free uh, Kekistan says, um, Alan Goldhammer says you should not exercise when fasting. So when you're doing extended fasting, trying to do the same types and intensity and volume of exercise that you would normally do when you're not fasted um, is going to be a challenge. So I would, I would uh, agree with that, but I still think you should exercise even while you fast. And so that's going to be my uh, suggestion of that. Okay. My, my uh, recommendation. All right, here we go. Uh, other questions that we have here. And again, folks, I'm very grateful that you're here live. Again, hit that like button if you enjoyed this content. Okay. What other question? Uh, what about fasting versus animas? I think the Hunter Biden, that's a funny uh, a funny handle for YouTube. Um, I doubt it's actually the Hunter Biden, but that would be quite interesting. Uh, what about fasting versus enemas? So enemas, coffee enemas and the, and the sort can be helpful for purportedly enhancing glutathione levels and, and all that. I think coffee enemas could be great, especially if you're constipated, if you've been traveling, uh, things like that. I, I think coffee enemas are helpful, but uh, they're going to work different than than fasting. I think periodically once a week, a coffee enema is probably a good idea. It, it's a, probably a good routine to get into, especially if you have a, a family history of colon cancer, maybe just helping to prevent uh, accumulation of fecal matter within the intestine, if nothing else. Okay. Okay, uh, Black Star has a good comment. The solution to just about everything is going back to living like a normal human being. Uh, absolutely, that is a really good question uh, comment. Uh, thank you for that. What about untrained versus trained, starting with a fast with a hit session to drain muscle glucose or glycogen? Yes, great question. A, a great way to start your fast is to exercise. Exercise is a fasting mimetic, and so it's going to mimic and simulate the effects of fasting. So that's a really good comment. All right. Uh, Kareen Aboon, I believe is how you pronounce your handle. Uh, yes, it was my understanding that exercise while fasting prevents muscle loss because it signals your body that you need your muscle. Yes. Remember, exercises, and, and we can talk about this study maybe more next week because it's a slightly different conversation, but um, exercise helps to increase muscle protein synthesis, which of course would be, uh, would be declining when you're fasting because you're in a nutrient-deprived uh, state. So that's a, a good comment. Thank you for that uh, comment. 
Okay, uh, question here. Saunas don't increase human growth hormone? Question mark. Yeah, saunas don't. You know, saunas move blood around. They move lymph around. They're good for the circulatory system, cardiovascular system, blood flow. They are good for blood sugar, but they're not really going to spike growth hormone. Um, there might be longevity properties linked with sauna, purging senescent cells and preventing oxidative stress and damage and the like. Uh, but yeah, they're not really a tool to... Uh, that really significantly enhance growth hormone. You want to spike growth hormone? Go lift some weights. That's what I would suggest and get a good night's sleep and don't be on your screens before bed. Okay. All right. Uh, I stopped taking the birth control pill in April and I'm wondering if I should be eating three meals a day as opposed to two meals a day between 12 and eight. You know, Renee, that's a good question. I would just evaluate your body composition changes, but hats off to Renee for stopping hormonal birth control. Uh, we know birth control lowers testosterone. Birth control changes empathy in the brain. Birth control uh, has a, a litany of negative side effects. So uh, good for you, Renee, for getting off birth control. Christine says, it sounds like I'm on speed. I don't take speed. I don't take methamphetamines or cocaine or any illicit substances. Uh, I just get excited about nutrition research. But thanks for the reminder. I should slow down. So Christine, thank you for that. Okay. Does the benefit of exercising have a diminishing return? At what point is exercising having a negative return on an extending lifespan? Yeah, this is a good point. You know, today I lifted back. I did four different exercises, three to four sets each. I was in and out of the gym in 27 minutes. You know, um, does that mean if you do 35 minutes, it's bad? I think probably an hour four days a week for weightlifting is plenty sufficient. Uh, and then adding on some, uh, you know, aerobic training, some, some hit training on top of that is fine. Great question. I love this question from in plain view. Does cold exposure synergize with fasting? Yeah. Yeah, it could, it could, but it could also make you more cold during your fasting window. So, uh, I, I do like the, the synergy, uh, there, uh, there was a, a recent published study found that fasting changes fat cell physiology and the function of fat cells. Uh, and that is, uh, really interesting, but we know that fasting makes you cold too. So, you know, if you, you don't want to be uncomfortable if you're trying to fast, but I do think there is synergy. So that's a good point. In fact, in the wintertime, when there's not as much food available, uh, people naturally fast. Uh, and so I think that's important. Um, again, small, quick plug, friends. We're talking all about fasting, the importance of exercise. The Berberin Fasting Accelerator from Myoscience is a great tool to help curb those evening food cravings for junk food, carbohydrates, you know, the cookies, crackers, ice cream, things like that. Take two to three capsules with your last meal, and you might experience some health benefits. There's close to 300 reviews over at myoscience.com. Okay. Uh, someone is commenting here. I don't know the, the URL, how to, it's la, lasmigs89. I thought the study showed that saunas can increase growth hormone by 16%, according to Rhonda Patrick. Yeah, I'm a big fan of sauna. In fact, I have a friend coming over to sauna tonight, but, but I have not seen that research on growth hormone and sauna. And I've studied a lot of research on that. Maybe perhaps it's a blind spot of mine. So I will look into that and get back to you. Okay. Does taking silica help strengthen your bones? That's a great question, Jay Boyce. Uh, silica, especially the biosil, it's the uh, orthosilicilic acid. It's silica bound to choline. Uh, it can possibly enhance bone mineral density as well as hair, skin, nail integrity. So I think that's a good tool, especially if you don't eat bone broth and organ meats. So Jennifer likes that I speak fast. Thank you for that, Jennifer. Fasting makes me hot. Interesting. That's a good comment. Okay. All right. So great questions, friends. Did you enjoy this content? Please let me know by hitting that like button, sharing this video with a friend. We have more research coming next Tuesday about longevity and aging and the amino acid glycine. I think you'll find that quite interesting. Um, I really am grateful that you are here and that you tuned in and that you're all of your great comments. Uh, I save all of your comments here and uh, questions during the live chat and I actually review them. And that helps me create more content that can possibly help you. So I'm going to save all of these uh, questions in the chat that popped up. And uh, yeah, I'm excited that you tuned all the way in. Hopefully you have a great night. And again, the study that we are talking about here 
is uh, right here. This is the free text. I can uh, post this later. Titled Training State in Skeletal Muscle Autophagy in Response to 36 Hours of Fasting. The long and short of the story is people who habitually exercise and are trained get much more mileage from their fast compared to people who do not exercise. So uh, if this doesn't provide a compelling case to exercise, I don't know what will. Friends, have an awesome evening wherever you are in the world. Appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for hitting that like button. And we will catch you on a future live session or video down the road. Have a good night. Bye now.